Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to talk about the Magic Missile spell. So I um, I made a comment in my last video that I thought Magic Missile, I don't know if I said it was the worst spell or that it was a bad spell, but I disparaged Magic Missile, <laughs> and uh, people demand a reason. Uh, no, some people said, you know, hey, talk about it, and some people said, no, Magic Missile is good, and I got some DMs, and so I figured I would talk about it right away. It wasn't uh, something I was planning on talking about right away, but it should be pretty easy. Um... I know where I stand on this. So, before I do this, um, I think I should look at the positives of Magic Missile. Because I feel like whenever somebody says something is bad and they just list all these things about it that are bad, I'm always like, yeah, but what about... So let me talk about why Magic Missile is good first, and then I'll talk about why I would say that it's bad. Now, to put things in perspective, I'm talking about in kind of your old school D&D games. So, something like Old School Essentials, you know, by uh, Necrotic Gnome which is basically a tightening up and kind of reorganization of BX, which is, of course, uh, if you're in the OSR world, I guess, or whatever old school world, this is many, many OSR games are built based on, on the, the BX system. And that's what I'm going to actually use here. Um, but also even something like AD&D, first edition. Second, I think, is the same. I actually didn't look at it. but um, And I have Swords and Wizardry here, too, which is basically... Uh, od and with the supplements. So, if all that still makes sense to you, let's move. In other words, I'm not talking about 5th edition. I, I might talk about a little bit at the end, depending on how long this goes, but 3rd uh, and 4th, I don't know anything about. I did never play them, or Pathfinder, or anything like that. All right, so, let's take a look at my screen. I have the, the basic and the expert book is open here. So, uh, Magic Missile is, in fact, a first level spell. So, it's going to be under Magic User Elf Spells. I mean, there's not that many of them. Uh, so let's drag this guy over so you guys can see. And let's look at the spell. What is it about the spell that makes it awesome? So it's got a 150-foot range, which is great. Because if you're in a dungeon or even if you're outside. Now, what is funny about this is that the range here is in feet and not in inches. Which, you know, sometimes things are in inches and then translate when you go outside. But it's 150 feet. So um, inches being 10 feet on the map. What you can do here is you can say, well, 150 feet is pretty far. That's like as far as a bow. So it gives the magic user a chance to stay back a bit. Duration one turn. This has been debated back and forth. Um, but generally speaking, the the there's two ways to look at this. One is that that was they can kind of say they're going to cast it and hold on to it. The other, then they shoot the missile. So like you can prep it before you walk into a room. Although I don't know why you would do that. But uh, and the other version is which came from Frank Menzer. Um, which is that when you cast a spell, the, the darts or the, the missiles appear kind of floating around you, and you can then send them off when you when it's your turn, I guess. Uh, which I guess you could use for intimidation or, or whatever, but you can prep them, basically. You don't have to cast a spell. What's good about that is it means you're not... I guess I do understand it. It means you're not casting the spell during combat, which means it can't be interrupted. So let's say you're going to go... Huh, so I just figured this out. So let's say you listen at the door and you hear there's orcs in there and you want to open the door and attack them. You know, before initiative starts, I guess there's going to be surprise, blah, 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 then it goes to initiative. The magic user could cast the the spell, and now it's already cast. Whether you want to imagine the missile's floating in the air or it's not, it, it's already cast, which means it can't be interrupted at that point. So um, that would be a good reason to do it. So that's a good thing, right? Because you can interrupt a fireball. You can't, you know. Um, now, it does auto... I, I'm assuming you know this. In BX and in most OSR games, it automatically hits. This is not true in the original Dungeons & Dragons, where... It was, and I also think possibly Holmes, where it just gave a bonus, like a, like literally like a magic arrow. It was plus one to hit. Um, the uh, the version of Swords and Wizardry Complete lists both options. So either it does a 1d6 plus one damage and you have to roll to hit with a plus one, or it automatically hits and it does a d4 plus one damage, which is actually the damage of AD&D, which is weird because most things have more hit points than AD&D, so that makes the spell even worse. But we're being positive at the beginning. So it does a d6 plus 1, right? Which is pretty nice. And at fifth, fifth, above 5th fifth level, so 6th level, you get 3 more missiles. Now, I think, yeah, because it's for every 5 levels the caster gains. So I guess at 6th level you would get uh, 2 more, and then at 11th uh, you would get 2 more after that. Uh, this BX technically only goes to 14th level. I mean, obviously you keep putting it further. So at the most you would end up with, uh, with I guess, 5 missiles. Okay, so that's great, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Why is that good? Well, I mean, automatically hitting is good, right? Obviously, range is good. Being able to prep it is good. But even more so, if you think back to the, the video, or if you haven't seen it, uh, check it out. I'll put a link. 
uh, to the video I did on making magic users more magical. I talk about the idea that people don't know your level and that, um, you know, you can intimidate people and magic users should play up the fact that they're magical and stuff like that. Well, if you look at the stats for, see if I can get to it without making everybody dizzy, for a normal human, okay? So now this is actually interesting, okay? Because if you look at Old School Essentials, which as much as I love this book and it's beautiful, is the reason why I still use this. Because I think this description is much more meaty and tells you a lot more about what a normal human is. So um, normal human, human does not does not seek dangerous adventure, blah, blah. Now, they have one to four hit points. And you can just assign them hit points because uh, it says here an adult blacksmith would have four hit points. A young child would, would have one. But of course, you could also roll, right? Uh, and even if you... So even if you... Um, didn't roll like an average roll here would be 2.5 which is lower than 3.5 which is the average of the missile so you're going to instantly kill any normal human and even if you don't there's a very 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 small chance that they won't die if you hit them even if they are the strongest of normal humans and here unlike old school essentials which lists like artists it lists a bunch of things here it says most humans are normal humans this is important now if your dm is running a world where this isn't the case then obviously you lose this benefit but most humans are normal humans, which means when you're setting up a town, when you're building your villages, and I know that if you look at some of the modules, like every merchant is a fifth level ranger for some reason, but most people should just be normal humans, right? They're villagers. That's why that, that's why you're exceptional as a player character. So anyways, um, though some uh, people with certain professions, such as merchant, soldier, lord, scout, and so forth, help in some adventures. Okay, so it's telling you that those people are still normal humans generally. Soldiers, merchants, lords, scouts. These are all people you might in, in encounter, like a town mayor or lord, uh, a merchant, the head of the merchant guild. These are all normal people, which means any of those people could be dropped automatically by a magic user. And because you can cast a spell ahead of time, 10 minutes, you could be outside, mumble jumbo, cast a spell. Now you've got 10 minutes to walk in there to get within 150 feet of them. You don't look intimidating. You're a magic user. You can just, boom, drop them, Right. It's a great assassination tool if you're that kind of character or the kind of thing where the town's about to run the party out and you just drop a guy and you say, you're who's next, you know, even though you're low level. I talk about this in the Making Magic Use More Magical. But my point is, is that if, if, if you play in a world where, as the book basically describes, that, that most people are normal humans, that not every, nobody knows your level, what's going to happen is you can be very intimidated with the magic, intimidating with the magic missile. And as you get up at higher levels, it also can be pretty deadly. I mean, you could probably kill most of the average orcs or goblins as well. But here's the problem with that. So now let's start sliding in that direction. Okay. This is the reason why, I, I mean, I'm going to give you a little background as to why I, I, I learned this, I'll say. Not why I think it, because I learned it. People coming from no, no version of D&D &D and only having played, let's say, video games, and people coming from other versions of D&D &D where... There's cantrips and magic missile is a different different story, like fifth edition. Oftentimes, go to make a magic user and they go, "Oh man, I can only have one spell. I'll take magic missile." And that's what where I look at it and I see this is not a good spell, because if you put yourself in the position where, make myself again, you are using you're relying on this magic missile to be your thing. You've only you can only cast it one time. This creates that idea that people talk about where it's like, oh, the magic user is terrible because they could just cast one spell, then they're done. And then what a lot of people do to kind of fix that is they just give them more spell slots and then, okay, so now they can cast two magic missiles and they're done. Right? That doesn't solve the problem. The idea is that the magic missile is just not the spell that a magic user in this type of system should take. Magic users are not warriors. They're magic users, right? And if we look at the rest of their spells, go back to the screen here. Right? Those are cleric spells. If we look at the rest of the first level spells, most of them, I mean, some of them can be used, obviously, in combat and stuff. But most of them are, are utility spells, and they're designed so that the magic user can basically boost the group up and do some cool stuff. Right? So, I'm just going to quickly run through them. I'm going to go through every single spell and tell you why I think they're better. Right? Okay, Charm Person, that's a no-brainer. If you've played any OSR games, Charm Person is incredibly powerful. Yes, it does not work on uh, Undead. Yes, they get a saving throw. But... If you 
take control of them with the charm, they basically see you as their best friend and they will fight for you and they will obey commands as long as they're not so far outside the realm of something they do. They won't, they won't run off a cliff or something. Most things with average intelligence are going to be charmed for at least a week. So you're a magic user. Now imagine that same combat with the orcs. You come into a room in the six orcs. So yeah, you shoot a magic missile, you kill one. Or you cast charm person on the leader of the orcs. That's a, you know, a two and a half hit die or orc or whatever. And, uh, Maybe, maybe he's a bugbear, right? Oh, it can work on bugbears. Yeah, bugbears. Um, yeah, let's say the bugbear ran in the orcs. This bugbear fails his save, and now you have a bugbear for at least a week, right? And that guy's going to fight for you and defend you. This is an ongoing spell effect. Very, very powerful. Detect magic, also very useful. You're in a place, you're trying to find the magic item. Knowing if things are magical is super useful um, to, to you. Floating disc. I'm not going to argue that's better than Magic Missile. That's another one that's very situational, and I don't think that Floating Disc is something that I personally would take in BX as a spell. I think it's useful um, in some situations, but mm, and it's unfortunate, really. Um, Hold Portal can be incredibly useful because they need to be three hit dice higher than you to get through it once you close the portal up. So if somebody's chasing you, you can block the way out. Or you listen at the door, the thief listens, he's like, oh man, there's like 20 goblins in there. Boof, whole portal. Now go past. When when you now go into the next room and you uh, start raiding the treasure stores and there's only two goblins in there because they're going to call the rest of them, they're trapped, right? Uh, light, very powerful, obviously. If, you, if you're supposed to, there's no light, you need light. But also, um, if you cast light in somebody's eye, it blinds them. A blinded creature cannot attack. I can't tell you the number of times. I used to play in a campaign, I run a campaign, where um, one of the, the guys, his henchman was a clerk. And that cleric would never take a healing spell unless somebody was hurt, then he would do it in the morning. He would always take a light. And the things they got away from with that light spell, I cannot even begin to tell you. I mean, creatures that should have killed them, you know, with the wandering monsters and stuff. Magic missile, we're talking about, obviously. Protection from evil wards things away from the magic user, which can really protect you. Remember, you're a magic user, you're, not, you're pretty fragile. Read languages, depending on the campaign, that could be useful or not. But... And I'm going to talk about this in another uh, video about treasure maps. Read Magic does allow you to interpret um, clues. In, you know, let me look at what it says exactly. Um, it lets you... The spell will allow the caster to read, not speak any unknown language or code, including treasure maps, secret symbols, and so forth. So again, can be very, very useful and feels like a scholarly thing, right? Now, Read Magic, I'm going to talk about it at the end. Shield. Okay, this is for the person that really wants to be a magic user, for some reason doesn't want to be an elf, and rolled a high strength index. If you roll a high strength index, or at least high strength, shield, and you want to fight things, you know, with your dagger, uh, shield could be useful to you, right? Because it'll give you better armor class. Otherwise, shield is not a spell that I would necessarily lean towards. Although you could cast it on another party member. Well, can you, actually? I'm not sure, because I don't think anybody's ever tried to cast shield on another person. <laughs> Most magic users, when they cast it, are thinking they're going to die. Nope, caster only. So, no. Unlike, I mean, if you're re if you're watching this and you've never played OSR games, shield is different than it is in 5th edition. Basically, when you cast shield, it lasts for 20 minutes, and it gives you um, armor class 2, which is like plate mail, against uh, missiles, and armor class 4, which is, I think, like chain and shield, against other attacks. So, considering that your armor class is nothing when you're a magic user, it can be very useful. Sleep is the mother of all BX spells. This is the one, I mean, they use it in the example of play. Sleep is very powerful. And and I know that a lot of OSR old school people are always like, these new games, everybody has to do character builds. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people that build ma make magic users take sleep because it is powerful. And it's probably the spell that a lot of first level magic users should take if they, if they want to have the maximum amount of magic uh, influence in combat. Ventriloquism, again, is interesting, but... I'll take a second just to talk about um, spells in BX. So you are only allowed in the BX system to have as many, you can only have as many spells in your spell book as you know, right? Which means that you, it's unlike, let's say, AD&D, where you could have like a bunch of spells and then you just pull out the one you want. In, in BX, if you've got, like I'm going to try to find the magic users, here's magic users. If you're, let's say, 5th level, this is your spell book. You have two first level spells in it, two second level spells, and one third. That's all you can cast, and that's what you got in your spell book. 
So if you were to take Magic Missile at first level, let's say, and then be very disappointed, I can tell you right now, um, then, you know, you can pick up another spell at second level. But at second level, you get a second first level spell. Now, if the DM is using the the rules in the book or the systems in the book to create adventures and not some modern modules, I talked about this before, there should be a lot more scrolls. Scrolls should be one of the, the most common magic items. And if you are running a can, if you have magic users in your campaigns, DMs, put scrolls in there. There's nothing worse than taking read magic, right? Which is literally for reading scrolls for the most part. Um, and then never getting a scroll. So to me, the, the kind of good way to build a magic user is to take something like Trump Person or Sleep or Hold Portal or one of those spells at first level, something that makes you interesting, uh, detect magic. And then at second level, after you've accumulated some scrolls that you can't read yet, you take read magic. I wouldn't take it at first level because you don't have any scrolls left. You want you less. You don't have any scrolls. You don't have any, any scrolls yet. Whew. Let me take a sip here. You don't have any scrolls yet, so I wouldn't take it as my first level spell. My first level spell. I would take something like uh, one of the other spells, <laughs> except magic missile. Second level, I take read magic. So you can use the scrolls. If you're in a campaign where that's not going to be a thing and the DM hasn't thrown out any scrolls by the time you reach second level, so that's like four or five adventures. I mean, maybe even have a meta conversation and be like, you know, I'm thinking I'll take and read magic, but honestly, if this there's a world where this is not a common thing, I'm not going to, you know. And hopefully your DM will, I mean, I suppose there's some DMs that are like, I'm not going to tell you, you know. But, I mean, everybody's here to have fun, right? So um, I would take it then. But look at this, right? This is why I want to bring this up. You do not get another first level spell until seventh level. And then ultimately you only end up with four of them. So even the most high level BX, well, I guess eventually you would get five if you went past 14, if you like uh, had a DM that ran you past 14. Eventually you will get four spells in your book, right? At this point, Magic Missile might be useful, right? You, If you get to seventh level and you're bringing up a new spell, or even when you get to 6th level. Because remember, at 6th level, the magic user can cast 3 missiles. Right? So you're probably saying, but Daniel, I already have my spells. Well, you know, BX has spell research. You'd have to abandon one of your two spells that you had if you wanted to take it at 6th level, you know, as opposed to 7th. But you definitely could do that. You could drop a spell that you had and take magic missile at this point. Now it's a much more powerful spell for you and probably a lot more useful. So when I say magic missile is not good or not a useful spell, I mean for a first level magic user or even oftentimes a second level magic user. I think there's so many other options that will make your magic user much more flavorful, much more interesting. And even if you're looking for that kind of game, much more powerful. Knowing like sleep, for instance, or charm person, those two spells are way more combat powerful. And sleep doesn't have a saving throw. So it's not even like, you know, uh, Charm person, yeah, it can suck if you held it for the whole time and you try to charm the ogre and then it doesn't work. But, you know, you can't win them all. But, and also, again, it lasts for at least a week. So they get a save, another saving throw at the end of the week. So it could last even longer. And there's nothing in BX that says that. Because I know that some of the 5e spells are like, once the charm is broken, they hate you. Nothing says that here. So I always treat it like if you don't abuse the person, when the spell's over, they just kind of go away. You know, they don't suddenly turn and start attacking you. That's, that just seems malicious for no reason. So... If you bring this, you 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 charm this orc uh, leader, he fights for you, you give him a share of the treasure, you treat him well, eventually, uh, you know, the charm will break, but maybe you'll have a henchman out of it. That just, you know, if the DM is playing that game, like if they, you keep this guy around. Or, you know, he's fighting for you, he's going to get in front of every blow, maybe he dies, right? Either way, you've gained something. Sleep spell, again, you save the party because you wipe out a whole group of enemies, really, with sleep spell. And the other ones are really useful um, as... Uh, you know, just uh, as tools, basically. In the fight, where you can just throw, one, and again, in an entire session, where you can just throw one magic missile, unless somehow you wait till the very end and you're fighting this big monster and everybody's about to die and it only has a few hit points left and somehow you know that and then you kill it with a magic missile, that's that epic moment that you could have, but that's not what most of it's going to be like. It's mostly going to be you throw in that magic missile pretty early in the adventure to kill a bad guy and then walking around with no spells and thinking, man, I wish that I had a different spell. So 
That's why I don't think Magic Missile is great. Let me know what you guys think in the description below. Oh, I think I already said that, right? AD&D &D dropped it to D4 plus one, but you do get missiles faster. So I know in fifth edition, it's pretty good, actually. You start with three missiles, um, and then you can use your spell, you know, spell slots, higher spell slots to have more missiles. So, uh, but I still think it does D4 plus one. So it's not a tremendously damage doing spell, but it is very useful for some people. And again, in fifth edition, where you are, where you're doing um, spontaneous casting, you don't have to take a spell slot for it. You can have magic missile, and you know uh, you can have a lot. You can yeah, there is a limit to how many spells you can have in your head, but there's a lot. You could have it just in the back if you needed it. So it's not like you uh, you need to have it uh, take up a spot if you're not going to use it. So I think in fifth edition, and again, I don't know about third and fourth. Let me guys, let me know in the comments, guys. But in fifth edition, I think magic missile is okay. I still think it's my favorite spell because you have cantrips that are attack spells too so i would probably do something else but you know but in an osr type game i can't see taking it unless you are a higher level and you just want to fill that slot or something very specific i guess what i will say though right before i end this i wasn't gonna say this i just suddenly thought of it is that this at least in bx it doesn't exist as far as i know um it might exist in ad and d uh, and and i know it exists in astonishing source my source was like boria but as a magic item that you can make for your players, DMs, a wand of magic missile would be awesome. You know, you make a wand of magic missile that can shoot, like, let's say, magic missile as if it was a, a six-level warlock, right? Or witch. So it's shooting three missiles every time it shoots, and you give it, like, ten charges. That is very cool for magic users to have. And that's a completely different thing. But as far as the magic missile as a spell that you should take as your only one of two or one of three or even one of four when you get to 11th level first level spells, I just don't see it. Like, as always, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have been watching the actual plays and uh, you want to continue to do that and you haven't already, I'll put a link in the description. Go to my other channel that I just started, Bandit Keep Actual Play, where we're going to do the live play. So we'll play all the games over there. I'll try to, in the, um, the social part of this, the community part, I'll try to put a link whenever I run a game over there, but just subscribe over there if you can. Uh, it makes it easier for me. And uh, I'll see you next time.